day 710 being Christopher Cruz. Holy moly, guacamole. Uh, I just got off a call with my second mom, stepmom, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. So she's been experiencing kidney failure. Her kidneys are only operating at 25%. The doctors can't figure out why. She's on her third doctor trying to figure out why this is happening. They can't explain it. Uh, it's just not a good situation. The only options are uh, dialysis four hours a day or a kidney transplant. And uh, a few days ago when she was texting me, God gave me the, uh, the answer. He gave me a word for her and the word was unforgiveness. And it was like, she is harboring so much unforgiveness that her body has become toxic. She's been harboring so much unforgiveness in her spirit that her physical body has become sick because her spirit is, is a toxic. It's toxic because it's got so much unforgiveness in it. And, uh, and with the unforgiveness comes pride um, and righteousness and victimness. And so I've been nervous to have this conversation with her because I'm like, she's not gonna hear this at all. Like nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear any of that. And most people be like, no, that's bullshit. This is a physical sickness. It has nothing to do with spiritual. And so uh, I talked to her and I explained like what happened with my mom the other night where, you know, she thought it was physical. She thought it was food poisoning. God gave me a word, which was impatience. Asked her about it. We prayed for it, cleared it, and she got healed. And it was a miraculous healing, like in 20, 30 minutes. And so I explained that story to her and I said, when you and I were texting, God gave me a word for you and it was unforgiveness. And I said, there you are, uh, you are harboring so much unforgiveness in your heart that it has caused your spirit to become toxic and now your physical body is sick because of it. And I said, think about if, uh, if you put a, a fish in a fish tank, right? If there's, there's a fish in there and there's all this water, if you put a, one little drop of poison in the water, it's probably not gonna do anything to the fish, you know, cause there's so much water. There's so much more water than there is poison. But then when you put another drop and another drop and another drop, at some point, you will have so many drops in there that the environment that the fish is in is gonna become toxic and therefore the fish's physical body is gonna to start to deteriorate and die. And I said, that's what's happening. You know, your spirit is the water and every piece of unforgiveness that you have is a drop of poison in your spirit. And now your, your spirit has become this toxic environment for your actual physical body. And now you're experiencing kidney failure as a result of something spiritual, not something physical. That's why the doctors can't figure it out. It is a spiritual attack and this is how the enemy attacks us. He will attack us spiritually and it will manifest physically. And we actually think it's a physical problem when in reality it's a spiritual problem. So I'm explaining this all to her and I'm talking her through it and all this stuff. And she's just like, huh, okay. And she's asking questions and I'm like, I thought we'd already be fighting by now. I thought she'd already be telling me to like <laughs> piss off. Like I don't, this is stupid, but she was uh, really receptive to it. And I was like, wow. And then I was just, brrr, God is just like using me as a vessel to just express it all. And, um, and I was like, oh my God, I just remembered there's three levels of forgiveness. When I was coaching Araceli on her on her business and her coaching business, God gave me this during our call. I did a video on this where I was just like, oh, I got it. There's three levels of forgiveness, forgiving others, forgiving yourself, and then forgiving God. And I was like, and she's like, well, you know, forgiving God's not an issue with me. I don't hold anything against God. And I'm like, that right there, that's the pride. You have no idea. You have no idea. You know, and, and the pride will stop you from even searching. You just thought about it for three seconds and you're telling me that you have no issues with God. You have no unforgiveness or resentment or frustration towards God. That's exactly what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to think that something is not there so you never search for it. You would not search for something that you don't believe exists. That's stupid, right? You're, ne you're never gonna search for the Easter bunny unless you believe the Easter bunny exists. And so you're never gonna search for unforgiveness towards God if you don't believe it exists. And that's exactly how the enemy deceives us and distracts us from the actual source of the problem. And, and so I'm talking to her about all this stuff and I was just like blown away because God has had me do this with my clients recently over the last couple of weeks. And it's just like, it's just crazy. And so, and then I'm speaking and, and God is giving me this declaration, this decree where I said, when we clear out this unforgiveness, when we heal your spirit and we take the poison of unforgiveness out of your spirit, you are gonna have a miraculous healing. You are going to have a healing where doctors cannot explain it. It will be defined as a miracle. It will define, be defined as impossible. Um, you will have an absolute 100% heal, healing in your life on this. 
and you will come out of it a different person, a transformed person, an open-hearted person, a loving person. And I, and I explained to her, God loves you so much that he had to make, he had to allow you to get sick. He had to allow the enemy to attack you because it would bring you closer to him. Because for most of us, we will not pursue God until we're on our knees. Sometimes God has to allow us to be brought to our knees until we finally reach out to him. And it's the same thing for so many people in my life. Like, and she raised me, you know, for a little bit of my life. And, you know, she's amazing and loving and she's stubborn as fuck. And I'm stubborn and my grandparents are stubborn and my parents are stubborn and my aunt is stubborn. And it's like, we're all stubborn. You know, we're all so loving and have the biggest hearts, but we're all so stubborn and prideful. And, and so it was like, you know, God had to bring me to my knees. Like I had to get my heart crushed in order for me to even consider going to God. Like, and, and then I did. And, you know, my mom dealing with homelessness right now, God has brought her to her knees, you know, and Araceli, I was just talking to her yesterday and she said that she finally got on her knees because she was feeling so sick because she's had COVID and God finally brought her to her knees and destroyed that pride. And it's just like, this is what, what God has to do sometimes. He has to allow us to be brought to our knees in order for us to, to pursue him, to ask for help. And, and so I just explained to her that that's what's happening with her. Like this is this, this illness, this kidney failure is actually a massive blessing because God will sacrifice your flesh to save your spirit. And he loves you so much that he will do whatever it takes to draw nearer to you and for you to draw nearer to him. And so this, this, this illness is actually a massive blessing because it's going to bring you so much closer to God, because had you not gotten this sick, you would have never forgiven all these people. You would have never checked your pride. You would have never done these different things. And, and you would have died with that intact. And, and so God loves you enough that he's healing that while you were here and he's using me as a vessel some, for some reason. And I'm just like, what the heck, man, this is, this is just crazy. And she's like, okay, so what do I do? And so I get, I'm going to get, I gave her homework. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, write it out and, and text it to her. And I'm just like, and I just know for a fact, it's going to heal her like zero doubt in my mind whatsoever. She has kidney failure. She either has to have a kidney transplant or she needs to get dialysis four hours a day. And I am positive without any shadow of a doubt that God is going to heal her as soon as this unforgiveness is healed. And I know exactly what to do with her because God gave me the equation a month ago when I was coaching Araceli. It's just like, what? And I, and I just used it as a demonstration with my mom and she got healed. This is a spiritual attack. This is why I'm so freaking excited and infatuated with spiritual warfare because it is what's happening. That is what is going on. Every physical sickness or illness is a spiritual attack that is being manifested physically. Every single one of them. And, and the Bible says that, that by his stripes we are healed. By Jesus' stripes we are healed. He was sacrificed on the cross. He died for our sins. And we are now healed in his name. Whew. What is my life <laughs> Like, but can it get more exciting than this? Like, wow. And I've only read 10 pages of the spiritual warfare book. <laughs> and this is already happening. Like God is giving me this wisdom, God is giving me this message. He's using me as a vessel. And it's it's shocking to me because I don't feel like I'm good enough to be a vessel yet. Like, I don't feel like I'm ready to be a vessel yet. Like, I still struggle with pride and ego and judgment and frustration and anger and hatred and lust and sin and, and all these things. Like, I feel like I'm still so, so impure and so just not the man for the job yet like I can see who I could become and that guy's totally ready but it's like God is using me and I'm still broken and it's just like dang God's just using me even though I don't feel like I'm the man for the job yet so yeah and I'm so glad that that I had that conversation with her because um, it's going to save her life. Not that I'm going to save her life, but God is going to save her life through that conversation and through the exercises that he guides me to guide her through. 
and um, today after our classes, our classes ended around like 2.30, um, everyone had to stay and like get some work done. I was supposed to do these calls and you know, I was making the calls and I'm just like, no, like I have things I need to take care of in my life. There are things I need to steward in my life. Like I can't be dropping the ball. Like, you know, I was supposed to call her last night and I was 20 minutes late to the call and you know, that, that really hurt her feelings. And it was like, man, I, I can't drop the ball with, with my life, you know? And so I went to my pastor and I was like, Hey, like, I can't, I can't do these calls. I got to go. I got to get stuff done. And he was like, okay. It's just like, <laughs> I got to work on saying no. I have to, I really have to work on saying no because I feel bad saying no to people. So uh, I really need to work on saying no, but I said no today um, because I could feel the frustration and the resentment that was building up. And it's like, this is not healthy or toxic. This is, this is toxic for me to harbor this anger and resentment, but it's my own fault because I'm not speaking up. All I have to do is say, no, I can't do that. I got to go and I can go. And this is exactly what I did. And he's like, okay, cool, man. And I left. And it was just like, Chris, just freaking speak up. Like, just say something. And it's like, okay. So I am so glad that I did that because had I not done that, I would not have had that conversation with her right now because I'd still be at church because we have our, our class tonight. And it's already been going for 50, 52 minutes, but me having that conversation with her is more important than me going to that class. Um, and so, yeah, it was just, I'm so glad that I did that and I know I've been meaning to needing to have this call for weeks but I've been scared and really I've just been like I've felt maybe not mentally I don't have the capacity it feels like I don't have the capacity to take on more you know more stuff on top of what I already got going on it's like ah, it just feels like it's a lot but then I have to remember is after these conversations, I'm so alive because I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's like, these are not draining conversations. These are enlivening conversations. I'm literally speaking life into people. Like when you speak life into someone, you speak life into yourself because you are the vessel for life to flow through you and out of your mouth and into their ears and into their heart and into their spirit. It's like, you are the vessel. So that life rubs off on you as it comes out of you. It's like, you are the vessel for that. So these conversations enliven me. But the enemy wants me to think that these conversations drain me, but they don't drain me. <laughs> That's crazy. What a bullshit lie. And it's so crazy because right before I talked to her, I was on the phone with my mom for an hour talking about faith, just preaching to her from what my pastor taught me today. It's amazing. This is freaking amazing. This this stuff is unbelievable. If I wasn't documenting this, no one would believe it. I wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> so I declare right here in this moment, she will be fully healed and her kidneys will be functioning at 100% when she is done with the work, the spiritual work that God is going to have us do. because he spoke through me and he declared that through me, you will be healed and it will be a miracle and the doctors will not be able to explain it and it will be a miraculous healing. It will be an instant healing. And, and I spoke to her and said, every person you forgive, every single person you cross off that list, every incident you cross off that list, you will feel more life come into your spirit. You'll feel more alive. You'll feel more energy. You'll, you'll feel more free. You'll feel more love. You'll feel more healed with every single person you cross off that list. <sighs> Wee. Literally, I'm just like flying by the seat of my pants. I'm just trying to hold on at this point. I'm just trying to not fall off the freaking roller coaster. I'm just feel like I'm holding on by my fingernails for dear life, just trying to keep up with everything that God is, is bringing to me. And on top of that, trying to figure out how the fuck am I gonna pay any of these bills? Like, I have five days and I need to come up with at least $500 and I don't know how in the F I'm going to do it. And then at the same time, I don't care in any way because this is so much more important than any of that. Like, if my insurance lapses, who gives a fuck if I can help my second mom heal herself and save her life? Like... Who gives a shit about my car insurance? Who gives a shit about my car payment? Like, 
I'd trade, I'd give this car away to save her life any moment and without a shadow of a doubt, like, it's just like, it's like God is rearranging my priorities. He's showing me the things that actually matter to him and therefore they should matter to me. But so much of the time, the things that matter to God don't matter to us. And the things that matter to us don't matter to God. You know, the things that matter to this world don't matter to God. And the things that matter to God don't matter to this world. And we get stuck in that and we get lost in that. And then we end up pursuing the wrong things. And then we wonder why we have so much unfulfillment and so much emptiness and so much loneliness and so much lack. It's because we're, we're spending so much of our lives pursuing the wrong things. We are not pursuing the things that our spirit wants. We're pursuing the things our flesh wants. But when we connect with God, we understand what's important to God. And then we pursue the things that are important to God. And then we feel this level of fulfillment that we've never experienced before in our lives. And it's the most enlivening, joyful, just experience of life that you could ever imagine because you know you're truly living. And there's just this fountain of, of life that is flowing through you. And it's the Holy Spirit, it's God, because you're pursuing the things that God pursues rather than the thing that peop the things that people pursue. And it's a completely different experience of life. Whew, come on. Amen, can I get an amen, 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 amen. Thank you, God. Whew, I need to go build a brand. Okay, I gotta go.